Ultra HD. Step into amazing. Or not. Welcome back to 4K Kings. I am Matt. I am Russ. And welcome to your number one home for physical media, movie reviews, unboxings. Don't type any other physical media channel in. We're the only ones that you need. No other ones exist, as far as I'm aware, at least. I don't really... I think we're the first and the only. And today, Russ, we're going to talk about something that we've never really talked about before, but I do see, you know, this chatter every once in a while about people buying... 4Ks and being very disappointed with them and mm -hmm. ones that people wish were better or like the DVDs better, like that kind of conversation. And that's just heat. So? <laughs> this has pretty much been a conversation amongst collectors since like the dawn of physical media anyway. It's like, you know, what release did I get? Is it good? Is it shit? You know, and really I think the argument or the conversation is what makes for a great upgrade in people's minds? Because really like what is the definition of the worst? Is it that the previous release was better quality? Is it that the release itself was botched and it's like, you know, broken in some manner? Or is it that I had high hopes for it and the results were just fine? Like, what are people pissed off about? When you think of like, this is the worst 4K I've ever bought, like, why do you usually say that? For myself, it's a combination of everything you just mentioned coupled with bad artwork. Yeah. I can almost forgive lackluster transfer if like the set itself is a, a nice... I piece on yeah. my shelf. And I don't think I've ever put a movie on Blu-ray or otherwise where I was just disgusted. Maybe there have been times where I didn't see much difference. Yeah. And and then again, like I'm not looking at it side by side. So what I thought we could do, Russ, and because again, this is really a matter of opinion. What's bad, what's what's good, you know one person can say something is great, another person completely shit all over it. But what I tried to figure out was what are the ones that are widely recognized as just bad amongst the most people? Like what names come up the most? What titles come up the most? So category one would just be widely recognized as bad. These names mm. constantly come up. Category two would be not necessarily bad. I just wanted more. And, you know, that's also a disappointment for a lot of people that they, this title has come out, they've been waiting so long for it, and here it is, and it's just kind of like, meh. So let's start with the, the category of not bad, but I wanted more. And I've got five here with a runner-up. So the runner-up for not bad, but I wanted more is the Lord of the Rings 4K release. So this is the release here, which I have, and I had been dying for this to come out. This came out right around the time when we started this channel, and I picked this up, and I watched it. And I absolutely loved it. I thought it was such a great upgrade um, to the previous uh, release. But people shit on that all the time. People are like, oh, it's nothing but DNR. Oh, the Blu-rays were so much better. Oh, they changed the color timing. And then there's other people that battle back against that. And it's worth fighting for. That's a title that people love. Yes. So you're going to have extreme reactions on both sides. Yes, people definitely argue about that one. So number five on the list of not bad, but I wanted more was the Star Wars 4Ks, mainly the complaints about Empire and Return of the Jedi. I'm unaware. What are the complaints? I've never watched the, those. The, the scrubbing, the DNR, the smoothing okay. over, that kind of stuff. Not too much <laughs> hatred, but enough to where people say, you know, these two movies are just, you know, I wish I wish I could not only have the original trilogy, but I wish the, the masters were a little bit better. I guess I don't get worked up about Star Wars because I just feel like they're going to keep being re-released. Anyway. Yeah, regardless. And I've never been excited to pick one up until Disney puts out a despecialized trilogy. It'll happen once they've realized, fuck, we can't make any more shows on Disney Plus. Yeah. Like we've completely uh, saturated the market with Star Wars. Yeah. What can we do now? We'll get it then. Yeah. But we're not quite there yet. Number four on the list is Goodfellas. Oh! <laughs> There's a little bit more back and forth here. This has its detractors and its fans. But again, it just comes down to a lot of this like digital scrubbing, this noise reduction yeah. that people do not like. It's come out a few times, but people just don't feel like the, the transfer ended up that good. I fucking believe that. In this day and age, what the fuck is this world coming to? Uh, Batman Begins is number three on the list. Again, I've seen this. I own this. I've never had a problem with it, but I see a lot of people that are like, out of all the Nolan trilogy, this one got the worst end of it. <laughs> Oh, really? It is the oldest of the three. It's the first one. So it's audio and visual issues with Batman Begins? It looks like, from what I've read, that people are angry about how the colors have been tuned up a little bit, and now everybody looks a little bit more orange. So Batman Begins, people are poo-pooing on that a little bit. But again, not bad. Just, I wanted more. Number two, Forrest Gump. A big pile of dog shit! 
There's a lot more people talking about Forrest Gump being a title they were dying for. Finally, they got it, and the transfer was just just okay. How about you, Russ? I never watched Forrest Gump in 4K or Blu-ray or DVD. <laughs> Fucking believe that. I can understand for all these movies. They're all very visual films. Yeah. And then the last one on this list of uh, not bad, but I wanted more is Jurassic Park. Apparently, one through three, not so great, but people really dislike what happened with one. Whoa! No! Oh! Oh! <laughs> ow! Oh! Whoa! Again, people just kind of harken back to what the Blu-ray was and what I'm getting instead here, which it looks blurry. It's not as clear. I feel like yeah. it speaks more to the extremism of fans because yes. these titles are going to be debated. The Star Wars movies themselves, just the movies, fuck the releases and all that. You can't win there either. There's going to be one camp that hates it because it's not what it used to be. And then a new camp who embraces it and accepts, hey, it can't be what it used to be. That's yep. too much nostalgia there. Way and I much. feel like that's spilling over into the objective criticism <laughs> of these releases. I no. could be wrong. Maybe they're just shit. You know, shit. I have actually seen Jurassic Park in 4K and I, I wasn't bothered by it. It didn't bother me at all. I guess maybe people are looking at it from a perspective of, I paid this money yeah. for this extra level of detail and quality and it's just not there. Now on to the widely recognized as bad list, which I don't think I've seen many people say good things about any of these titles at all. Number five on the most widely criticized 4Ks is planes, trains, and automobiles. You're fast. This was one I was actually really excited about too because it had that bonus like I don't know, like an hour and 10 minutes worth of deleted scenes, remember? Well, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles got tanked. Every single review I ever read was like, don't buy this, it should be recalled. It's like one of the worst things ever, anyone's ever seen as far as the transfer itself, how it looks, it looks fake, it looks plastic, it looks... People dog the hell out of this release. It was on so many bottom five lists of the year. Sorry, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles for the release that you got. Number four kind of stings a little bit for me because it's a movie I really like. 310 to Yuma. People, for some reason, and I, I can kind of see why after I looked at some screenshots of some side-by-sides of the blue, which I really love the steel look, by the way. I, I own this. I've seen it. It never bothered me once. But when I listened to what people had to say about how the Blu-ray was better, I, it kind of intrigued me. So I went on you know, and saw some screenshots of the Blu-ray side-by-side with the 4K. And when you scroll side-by-side, -side, the 4K literally looks blurry compared to what the Blu-ray looks like. You heard him? I heard him. Now, again, this is a zoomed in shot. So zoomed out, it's not gonna look blurry necessarily, but in most scenarios, the clarity is there in the Blu-ray, but it's not in the 4K for some reason. The colors are a little darker too. I don't think that's a bad thing. It just looks a little bit more rich, but the quality, not there. I'm gonna stick up for my release of 310 to Yuma. People might hate it. I'm gonna be in that camp of like that one or two person that's like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well. Number three on the list of most hated 4Ks, Russ, is the Bourne series. Can I have my money back? For but you one. get a cool book bag. If you want it, and that was the thing that people shit on the most. It was like this great box set with a book bag and a freaking compass and a dog tag, but the transfers still suck. What about the transfers? Come on. You're a total goddamn catastrophe. And by God, if it kills me, you gotta tell me how this happened. People hate these transfers. They hate them. But you got a book bag. You get one now. They're trying to move discs. So they're trying to give you book bags because no one's buying these 4Ks. They suck. Well, these fans weren't born yesterday. <laughs> well. That's number three, and I feel like this, that almost could be number one. I saw a lot of people pissed off about Bourne. There's more fans about the Bourne trilogy than I realized. Number two, Russ, Pirates of the Caribbean. I was hoping You're this waiting. was on the list. Yeah, yeah, this is universally just panned. I know exactly what you mean, love. I would have bought it. See, this is what I was referring to earlier. I heard all the nightmare stories about the transfer and the release, and I was like, nope. And I'm in that camp of, I only want the first movie. I don't want a yeah, box set. True. I don't care about the sequels. But and it's I, visual. Oh, my yeah. God. Don't screw this up. I know. It looks incredible. Gore Verbinski is a visual director. Get it right. And that would have been a release I picked up because, like you said, I'm not going to watch all these other ones, but that first one I've heard enough about to say, Let's put this on for me, for the family, for whoever. Like, But as soon as it sounds like it's shit, I immediately checked out. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. Pirates of the Caribbean is number two. So many people disappointed about that. Because, again, talking about Bourne and 310 to Yuma and Planes Trains, there's their fans, but Pirates of the Caribbean is a huge franchise with a huge amount of followers and fan base. Yeah, How can you screw that up? Yeah, I don't understand what Disney was even thinking when they hired Amber Heard to do the transfer. She shit the bed on it, dude. <laughs> And lastly, Russ, number one, you're going to take a guess? Universally hated. We've talked about this before. I own it, but never watched it. Terminator 2. Ju Judgment Day. Why the f 
Dude, even I know that had shit. Dude, that had a shit Blu-ray release. What's wrong with your eyes? Every corner, everywhere you go, every release that's ever been put out for this 4K version, because there's steel books, there's regular editions, everyone just clowns on this, hates it. What was James Cameron thinking? I feel like I'm going to throw up. Small minority of people do defend it and say, I like this look. This is what James Cameron was really going for, or whatever. But so many people are like, it's unwatchable. It looks shiny. It's waxy. It's terrible. Like, what is this that I'm looking at? So many people. And I have it right here, but I've never watched it. I know I shit on Terminator 2 sometimes, but I give Robert Patrick a lot of credit because he stepped into a role that Arnold already defined mm -hmm. and he came out at shit toe to toe. Props to him, but I'm sure he wouldn't be happy to find out that Terminator 2 is number one on the list of 4Ks that everyone freaking hates. No. I know we've had our conversation about Terminator 2 already. It's definitely something that obviously has a ton of fans and James Cameron has a ton of fans and it deserves at least a good release, whether you like the movie or not. And it does not have one. And that sucks. Those are some of the worst 4Ks that have ever been put out. But I will also close with saying, who do you think is the worst studio overall? I've got two here. Or number two on the list, I'll say is Paramount. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. That's my opinion in Ooh, terms of what I've seen, what yes. they put out, the quality of what they put out, the double yes. dips that they try to do on their Good labels. Call. They oh suck. Oh my God. Paramount Presents. Yes. Which is just your test run to see if it'll sell and they, give you the yep. 4K three months later. Fuck you, fuck you. I don't support them anymore, yeah. dude. After that 48 hours thing, I bought that Blu-ray and then I'm not even kidding. I believe it was three months. Yeah. And then they announced the 4K. Even if they took the Paramount Presents label and just morphed it into 4Ks, I'll re-release 48 hours, but in the same style. Now it's like this 4K is like, and it's, it's like a double dip in another different kind of case. It's like its own thing. It's like how they yeah. do it. And I like that blue style where the slip yeah. opens up and it's a poster, the original artwork poster. That's brilliant. Give that to me first. Stop yes. taking advantage of my OCD collecting yeah, habits. But number one, I would have to say is Disney. Whether it's mm. anything animated, whether it's anything, like we yeah. mentioned, Star Wars, MCU, any of the releases that they put out, they yeah. all either seem like rush jobs, afterthoughts. It just doesn't look like I'm getting that and, elevated level of quality. And how strange is that? It's Pixar. Yeah. Like, look at what um, Coraline, Kubo and the Two oh Strings. Like, these look fucking amazing. And yes. I'm sorry, as, much, as great as those movies are, I think culturally and on the mainstream and to the normies, uh, Toy Story hits way harder. Well, I... I guess that makes sense. I feel like both of those are probably on the low end uh, of studios that are putting out 4Ks. Yeah, no, those are good calls. I, I'm having trouble even thinking of other answers that would surpass those two in terms of shit. What a pile of shit. If anyone out there, if you have a different list, if there's some that we didn't mention that you also feel need to a light shine on how bad they are, or if you want to defend any of the ones that we talked about, let us know below. What is the worst studio out there for you and your opinion? Let us know that. If you like this video or learned anything, click us down below, sub if you'd like. I'll even give you a low key PSA and that's get your eyes checked because a lot of people don't get their eyes checked every year. And you know, like sometimes your vision gets a little blurrier as you get older and maybe you need glasses to fine tune your vision. Maybe you need contacts, whatever. That amount of clarity increase that you're getting from 4K sometimes could be lost if you're like sitting further away and you haven't gotten your eyes checked in a while and you're just missing out on everything. Like older people, mm -hmm that wear readers or whatever else, like they're not gonna see the difference in 4K. They might as well get the $10 DVD. DVD. Check your health, check your eyes, get, get in touch with your doctor, make sure everything's working. And stay healthy out there. I mean, this is a... <sighs> Co-pays are high. Co-pays are high. Ooh. Go out there, get some blood work done, subscribe to us, tell your doctor about us, support physical media, and keep tuning in.